Hello everyone, today we are going to take a wander up and have a look at Duddingston Lock. So, it is Saturday the 8th of September and you can see the beanie hat is back. Um, yep, it's starting to turn a little bit with the weather now. Uh, it's sitting about 14 degrees, so actually it's not that cold, but it's threatening to rain and you can see by the clouds and things behind me, the blue skies are gone. We're getting back to more traditional Scottish weather now. So I thought today, unfortunately today's video, scratch my face, uh, today's video is decided because of a lack of time really and the only amount of time that I can get to town and where I've got to be with you know life and job and things. So um, Duddingston village slash lock is a lovely little area on the far side of Arthur's Seat. Arthur's Seat beside me, well actually Salisbury Crags there. Um, so we're going to take a wander round and have a look at that and tell you a couple of little bits of facts. This walk that I'm walking, the main bit of Arthur's Seat's behind me, Holyrood Palace behind me, um, and this bit here, it's just a nice little road leading up. Lots of people go running here if you're coming to town and you run and jog and you're looking for a nice little run. Lots of people run round Arthur's Seat, Salisbury Crags. There's a road that goes up and round and down. Not all the way to the top, but halfway up and round and down. So you can do that if you enjoy. There is a pass. Let's see if I can follow it from behind. See that there? Yeah, that's that's. That's the path, right there. I can see one person. Where are you person? Oh, I've lost you. There you are. One person walking up right now, two people. So if I zoom out, you can see. You can walk that path all the way around, which is a very cool path. Obviously you can get up to that bit as well if you want, but that path you can get to just opposite um, Holyrood Palace and you can start and walk that journey. That bit up there. Another bit of movie trivia for you, uh, Trainspot 2. Um, Trainspot 1, the majority of that film, although it was based in Edinburgh, it was filmed mostly in Glasgow. There's little iconic bits that are in Edinburgh that are blatantly Edinburgh. Um, I can't get my hat, right. Um, but the majority of it was filmed in Glasgow. However, the second one, Irvin Welsh, the writer, was like, no, we're filming it in Edinburgh, because it's based in Edinburgh, I want it filmed in Edinburgh, or we're not doing it. So they filmed it in Edinburgh. So there's a great bit in Trainspot 2 where Ewan McGregor is taking Ewan Bremer running to try and get him off his addiction. Um, so you need to transfer your addiction to something else to try and run it. So they go for a jog, and the running, it's a brilliant sort of, it must have been done by a drone, but they are running up the top and along those bits, probably around the corner actually rather than right there. But it's a brilliant shot, it's a beautiful shot. Go watch the film. So we're kind of coming up on the back of Arthur's seat right now as I head towards Duddingston and Duddingston Loch. And it's a good angle of Arthur's seat because Arthur's seat gets the nickname um, The Lion, or at least it did when I was growing up. I don't know if people still call it that now. But the reason it got that nickname is because of this angle when you look at it that we're coming up on. Uh, the shape is kind of like a sitting lion. How it got that nickname... Well see, I was going to assume that it got that nickname years and years and years ago. But maybe it didn't. Maybe it's a fairly recent nickname. Or maybe I'm making this up. But no, I definitely know it in my head. I definitely know it is nicknamed the lion. Anyway. Have a look, see if you can see it. So this is kind of the back end of Arthur's Seat. Well, I suppose there's no back end, it's a hill. But if you look at it from here, this is kind of how it gets the lion sort of bit. There's the head of the lion and then the hump. And I think the bit that really gets it is you see that shape there. Like that was its hind leg sort of sitting there. So there you go. I'll try to see if I can get a better angle of it. But that is Arthur's Seat as the lion. We will. We will go up Arthur's Seat at some point. I say we, because Kirsten's wanting to do it as well. And we're thinking it might be fun to take the dogs as well, because it'd be a nice walk for them. So we will go up Arthur's Seat. I know we've been asked for it at some point, but um, if you are thinking about it, obviously the opposite side, Holyrood Palace, is not as steep and it's a semi-gentler climb. 
However, if you fancy it from this end, you can see people kind of walking. Uh, there's kind of some there, and there's more people there. This, let me zoom out again, because you can't see my hand. This sort of route here and up. And then onto there and then you can go across and up to the main point there's steps carved into it at certain points here so if that's more your thing if you prefer maybe walking up steps and you can see there's a path there's people going all the way up sort of that way and then up you can do it that way as well however today we are not going up there we're going to continue around the back of Arthur's seat and go along this road to Duddingston Lock all right I pre-empted the hat a little bit, it's not quite hot weather yet. Um, so we're heading down the road now, that's Arthur's seat just beside me there. I just wanted to show you the sort of rock formations here, oh it's dark, trees. Um, not because I'm a geologist or anything like that, just because they look cool. And look at that beautiful, I was going to say butt. <laughs> um, of Arthur's seat, which I suppose it kind of is. Um, if you're thinking of it, it's the lion end, this would be the butt end. They have to be careful here uh, because they do get rock falls and things and there is signs at certain bits saying, you know, careful, rocks could fall. And there we have Dunningston Lock starting to appear in the distance there. This is actually quite a nice peaceful walk to come even though it's in the centre of town and this is kind of... It's a funny little road that runs along the side of Arthur's Seat, but it's almost a main vein. You can really cut across down quite quickly on this road. Anyway, um, there's loads of really cool wildlife here, if that's what you're into as well. Lots of wild pheasants just running about and things. Um, so if that's your thing, if you want a nice wee country walk in the middle of town, this is a good way to come. Apart from the odd sounds of an animal back there that kind of worried me, but still. So the reason... The reason that I thought this would be nice today is just to show you, a, it's not so much a touristy um, hot spot for people to go to, but it is just in the centre of town, kind of. It is nice and peaceful. You will get some beautiful, spectacular pictures. And it's got a little bit of history. Not a huge, massive amount, at least not as far as I'm aware. I'm not a historian. There maybe is. Um, I always worry when I tell you history facts that People from Edinburgh will go on and go, oh, that's wrong. Um, I'm not a historian. I try my best to tell you the truth, but you know. I've arrived at kind of sort of the Duddingston side now of Arthur's seat. Heading down a wee path. Now you'd forget that I was in the centre of town now when you sort of look at all of this and see how beautiful it is. Duddingston Lock itself, it's the only natural lock left in Edinburgh. As I've been doing these videos, I've found out more and more that there's been natural locks all over the place. The meadows, another one, sorry, at Holyrood Palace and things like that. I didn't know that these all existed. And as the course of the city expanding and developing, we've drained them all. But this one still exists, which is nice. There are a couple of unnatural locks, ones that have been built. But this is beautiful. I didn't even know that this was here. Look at this. It's a nice little area where you can just come down and sit and chill, which is handy. So this is... It's kind of a forgotten, beautiful area now. Well, it's not forgotten. Everyone knows about it in Edinburgh, but no one really comes. And it's a shame. There's a lot of fish in there. I know that fishing was permitted. I don't know if, it, I think it still is. I think you can still fish. I don't know if you need to get a permit or anything, but you can fish. Personally, I don't fish. I don't eat fish, don't like seafood. Loads of ducks. Hello, Mr. Duck. So like I was saying, this used to be a real draw for the people of Edinburgh, this area. I mean, it's so peaceful, beautiful and peaceful here. I'm, I literally am the only person here. There's no one else here. It's not early. It's like half eleven in the, on a Saturday morning. There's no one else here. Um, the, the real shame is you used to be able to get a boat and go out and row on there. This might be, even though this is not something that, you know, as a youth would be go, let's go rowing. Let's, let's just get a boat and go rowing on the Dunstan Lock. But it's a shame that you can't now. I think that there, that little white hut there, is what remains of the boathouse. 
The big thing about this, oh, that was my face by the way. The big thing about this place as well is, and this has shown how Scotland's changed and, and how the weather and things changed. Now we're, like I said before, dreek. It's, it's grey, it's rainy, it's miserable a lot of the time. But it, you, this used to freeze over, like a lot. And I mean like, skatey on freeze over. It was a big draw for people to go skating on the loch here for a long, long time. Now, it just doesn't. It just does not freeze that much. But yeah, it was a big draw for people to go skating on here. I'll see if I can find it, but there's a really cool picture of, I think it's in 1900. So we're not going that far that back, only 118 years. Scotland-wise, historic-wise, that's snap of a finger. It's nothing. Um, this was just proper, frozen over. You know, like the kind you get in Canada and things, where like whole rivers just freeze over for miles and people skate on it. That it's a shame that we don't get that anymore. I would really enjoy that. So yeah, look how peaceful it is. Uh, I was I, I've came over at the old boathouse here, which is ruined now. I mean, I'm guessing that looks like it's. It was flaps or something that came up. But what's interesting is there's a sign here that says um, fishing for disabled people and carers only. So obviously fishing, something's stuck in my throat. So obviously fishing's still permitted here. And this area here is for, you know, for people when wheelchairs and things to be able to come. And it's a little bit overgrown. I think it's kind of just been forgotten about now. There's a famous painting of our, our reverend skating on Duddingston Lock. It's called The Skating Minister. You can still see it. It's in uh, the National Art Gallery, I think, in Edinburgh. It's a beautiful paint. And if, uh, I'll put a picture up. You'll probably recognise it. Um, as I was looking up facts for this as well, apparently uh, a copy of it, or what was supposed to be a copy of it, hangs in the apartment of the main guy in white collar of the main character. If you ever watch White Collar, he's a he's a con artist and things. Um and forger and stuff. So but it, that kind of I love that program. It's a great program. It's a shame it's not on TV anymore. Uh but that was that, that's kinda cool. I like that. You know it's always handy when to tell you facts about Edinburgh and things. And there's a plaque to do the job for me. So saying this area has had um, people on it or people hunting on it for around 9,000 years which is just incredible when you think about it it's also been used as a royal hunting ground uh, farmland for people and things like that as well until eventually in the 16th century it became a royal park but as well as Duddingston this beautiful peaceful little area to come and just sit and look which uh, kind of makes me sad that it's unused and just sitting here. Duddingston Village, which is just here. It's a beautiful little bit of Edinburgh, really small roads. Um, there's a Duddingston Kirkyard, if you like that sort of thing, if you want to have a little wander, but the one big reason to come here, and I'll do a separate video on it, hopefully me and Kirsten going into it, is the Sheep's Heed Inn. So, park's just there, Duddingston Lock's just there, I've just came up, and I'm going to head up this little path here, heading towards Durrington Village. This is really one of the big pulls about coming to this part of town, the Sheep's Head Inn. So there's been a, a pub on that site since the 14th century. That is not, building has not been there since the 14th century, but on that site there has been a pub since the 14th century. Yeah, I think it got the Sheep Seed in because yeah, it got the name Sheep Seed because the king, I want to say in the 1600s, gave the pub the gift of a ram's head. But there's traditional skittles in there. You go in and play skittles, and the food and the look of the building is just beautiful. It's spectacular. It's an incredibly nice, uh, homely pub. And the food is brilliant. And you know who loves to go there to eat? The Queen. Whenever she gets an opportunity, if she's up in Scotland and her schedule allows, she likes to go to the Sheep's Head Inn and have some food. Can you get a higher recommendation than that? So there you have it guys. Dunningston Lock, Dunningston, oh, this, no, I've not went into Dunningston Village. And we'll do a separate video where we go to the Sheep's Head Inn. But it's 
it's definitely well worth a visit if you want just a little distance from the hubbub, you want a little bit of peace and quiet, but you want to see some nice, beautiful history at the main at the same time. So I'll be walking back to the centre of town. And everyone again something catches your eye and you're like, that's worrying. This sign. Innocent cycle path. I'm kind of worried that Edinburgh has an evil cycle path now. Or guilty. Guilty cycle path. That would make more sense, wouldn't it? So, as I head back into town, I was thinking what would be fun is a question video. Because lots of you ask questions about Edinburgh all the time in the comments. Like random, random questions. What's the best way to get from here to there? Should I get a taxi from this to this if I'm arriving here? And all these sort of things. So I, I always answer where I can if I know the answers. Or if I don't miss them because sometimes a lot of them come in. And if I've missed your question, I'm sorry. But why don't we just do that? Why don't we just do a question video? So if you've got Edinburgh questions, anything you want to know, start to comment in this video and we'll do a video answering all your questions. Can't get fairer than that, my friends. Can't get fairer than that. I keep thinking about the old skating and the boat in there. And it's a real shame. I'm hoping someone will see this somewhere in Edinburgh and go, I'm going to fix that and put boats back on the water and stuff. Um, I don't know if they will. I doubt it. But it'd be nice. I keep thinking about the skating though. As much as my head's going, yeah, I'd really enjoy that. The other part of my head's going, I would fall a lot. Like a lot. One last question. Who wants an extra video this week? Yep. If you go to the Edinburgh Playhouse YouTube page, randomly over the course of the last year, they have been very kind and um, asked me to make a couple of videos for them. I just did one this week because they had the press launch of their Christmas show, which is the national UK tour of Kinky Boots. It's got having its Scottish premiere at the Edinburgh Playhouse and they asked me to go along and film stuff. So if you want to go onto their YouTube page, you can watch that video. And I've done a couple of history videos for them and the launch of a couple of other things over the course of this year. So if you want a couple of extra videos this week, Head on over to them. You can. I don't know if they'll ever ask me to do anything else for them, but I've done some, you know. So go and have a look. Go check it out. Just got a. As I'm walking back, it's got a whiff of hops from brewing. Um, it's, it's a smell that I haven't smelled in Edinburgh for a while, funnily enough, because there used to be a lot more breweries round about. But it's nice. It's a nice smell. Anyway, I think that's about it this week, guys. Um, remember, do the, the likey thing and the subscribey thing. Come join Clan Brunford so you know you want to. Um, but, till next time, bye humans.